Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me once again today. Study, experience and history are our greatest teachers. We can learn the most from those things. And if they're done in an honest fashion and a sincere fashion, finding the truth is not that hard. If you set out to uh, study a faith and uh, you study the Bible properly, you'll find that the Bible was the first book ever written. The instructions given uh, to Moses uh, were the first ever recorded. And of course, that leads us back to Genesis, which is the creation of all things. So if you're searching for a very beginning, that's it. That's where it comes from. No other faith is going to give you that detail. No other faith is going to give you the scientific um, uh, structure of the earth like the Bible has given you. No other faith is going to give you all those things because this was the first book. This was the very, very beginning. And that's history. That's, that's truth. And if you study that, you can find that within, within the pages of the Bible very easily. From the beginning all the way to the end, it matches the beginning of creation right through to uh, the revelation where God is saying how it's going to be in the end. You can, it's all there for you if you want to study it and you want to learn it. And the experience uh, of people through here will give it to you. And then the history, his story, the Lord's story, uh, will give you the outline of everything here. And look, people in life... Uh, are, f are full of looking for adventures. And, and I, I don't have a problem with that. I think, I think it's a wonderful thing. And people uh, set out on many different ventures throughout the course of their life, seeking for some sort of meaning, looking for something. And you need to be able to understand um, what you're looking for and why you're looking for it. Um, and I've known many people over the years who uh, have set out on ventures um, Seeking fulfillment, inner fulfillment or spiritual fulfillment or, or physical uh, fulfillment, whatever it is, but they've set out on ventures. Look, I've known over the years people who've set out on different things. Um, you know, people who set out on a sporting adventure. They, they, they want to be a, a successful or famous um, footballer or basketballer or netballer or, or in some kind of sports. Um, and then I know people who've set out on business ventures and they've wanted to, to, to uh, thrive and have successful businesses and, and, and make lots of money and, and live in big homes and drive nice cars. And then I've, I've known people who've wanted to do the absolute things. Um, you know, they want to climb mountains or they want to sail around the world a solo. I remember growing up as, as a young man, there was a, a, a man in, in the town where I lived who had spent a lifetime building a boat that he wanted to sail around the world in. To the best of my knowledge, he died before the boat was even completed, sadly. But you see, there are so many things that happen in our life, these ventures, these quests, uh, quests that, that people uh, seek. Uh, people who, who uh, I've seen people who, who want to climb mountains um, and uh, go up to Everest and, and some of the other high peaks and they train and they train and they train. I know a, a, a man, I didn't know him personally, but I saw him training for it and he, he'd, he'd lost 20 kilos in, in his training. He'd drag a tyre behind him while he was jogging down the street and you'd hear as this man went by and he was so, so dedicated to this cause. And, and, and look, th th those are noble things, don't get me wrong. We need to strive for things in life, we need to do things. And of course you need to, to look at the, the history and the experience of others to find out how to do that, that's how we do it, okay? And these people, obviously, if, if, if they wanted to be successful, they had to look at what other people had done, they had to have some kind of experience in it, and they do it, because if you do it without those things, you're not going to succeed. A, a lot of people climb mountains who are not ready, and, and they pay the price, and that's for their life. People sail around the world, they're not ready, they need to be rescued or, or, or they perish. People go into sporting events and their body's not ready and, and they hurt their bodies. So we need to be able to uh, have these ventures and, and, and go forward and, and, and there's nothing wrong with those things. However, if those things govern your life and there's nothing else in your life, there's no spiritual awareness, no, nothing that you want to uh, be connected with God, there's always going to be something missing. Something is missing. That's my message today. Something is missing because I've met these people after they've done these things. Some have been successful and some haven't. And let me tell you this, okay? And I, I don't ever name people because I think that would be wrong. 
because I've just learned from experience myself, you just don't do that. But having met the people after these quests, some successful, some not successful, there was still something missing in their life. They had to do another quest. Or they had to do something else. Because there was no inner peace. Maybe climb another mountain, sail another boat, do another sport. It was all in the search for this satisfaction. And they didn't realize that those things was a temporary satisfaction. Those things were a temporal thing. There was a euphoria. There was this greatness. I've made it. I've made it. Most of the time, with no credit to the Lord for putting the breath in you in the first place. Some yes, most no. But you see, if you don't have a purpose in life, and your purpose is only that thing that you're striving for and it fails, a lot of people are in a very bad place. I know people who strove to be successful in the arts and music. They want to be a singer. They want to be an actor. They want to be a painter. Uh, again, we, there's nothing wrong with those things. We, we need those things. It's lovely to go into art galleries. Most of the time, some of it's complete rubbish. Um, but, you know, and, 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 and music, you know. I, I love to hear people who are using their musical talents to honour God. And, you know, there is, there is some nice music out there that's a secular music, but a lot of it's just rubbish. It's not even music. It's just noise. You know, but look, honestly, you've got to have a purpose in life that's beyond what you're, you're going for. And people say, well, you're, you know, you're picking on this. No, no. Even, even if you're a, a little old lady who sits down and knits booties, you need to have more in life than that. I'm, I, I'm not just going for people who are, you know, uh, younger or older. I'm just saying for anybody, everybody, even myself. You need to have that purpose in life. And those things won't satisfy you. Something is missing and it always will be missing because it's only fulfilling the flesh. It's not fulfilling the inner spirit. Now, people who climb mountains and sail boats and stuff, they'll say, oh, but it's the freedom of the spirit. And then they come back, but there's something still missing. They've got to do it again. When I started studying this book, the Bible... It set me free. I no longer had to chase those ambitions. Although it's, it's great to, to, to go out and do those things, and you can still do them. The Bible doesn't stop you from doing those things. No, no, no. But what it does is it gives you the peace and satisfaction that if you don't succeed with it, or even if you do, it gives you that satisfaction and peace that no earthly or fleshly course or, or, or business or hobby or sport will ever give you. There will always be something missing if you have not addressed the spiritual part of your body. And I've always said to people, you need to address both. You need to address the physical side of your body. You need to stay healthy. You need to eat healthy. Yeah, you need to address that physical side. And you need to mentor your, your, your emotional well-being so you don't get caught up in all this worldly nonsense and end up going nuts. A lot of people do. And you spirit, you need to feed your spirit with the word of God, or something will always be missing. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your love to us. We thank you that our eyes, our spiritual eyes, can be opened by the truth that is in your word. Father, as we open the Bible today, the Holy Scriptures, the oracles of God, the divine library, Father, I pray that you would... Uh, Open the hearts and the minds and the ears of men and women everywhere so that they would understand the greatness of this book, the history of this book, the experience in this book, the love of this book. And they can place that into their hearts, into their own lives. Because there will always be something missing if they haven't addressed the spiritual issues in their life. Father, I pray for each and every person listening today that they would seek their spiritual being through the Holy Lord the God of the Bible. Father, I praise you and I love you in the wonderful name of Christ our Saviour. Amen. It's not difficult to see when people set out on ventures that um, if they don't work, they often become broken people. Some recover, some don't. Um, it doesn't matter what, what the venture might be. They're searching for something in their life and they, they know there's something missing, so they begin searching. 
So I did that many, many years ago. So um, there's some great verses in here to encourage you to uh, study and uh, to seek. And uh, so first we'll start with the book of Ezekiel and we'll go to uh, chapter 36, verse 26. It says this, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. See, there's that thing about the new spirit. You need to renew the spirit that's in you so that the, there's nothing missing. Okay, and, and it goes on here and it says, And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. The stony heart in your flesh is the thing that brings you down when, when things don't work. Okay, when you set out on some kind of venture looking for the truth in life you, and, and, and you, know, you find it's not where you were looking because it's not in those fleshly things and you get that stony heart. You become hardened, hardened. You know, sadly, I know so many people who, who have become a, a hardened in their heart because things didn't work out. The, the fleshly things just didn't work out. So they shut everything out. They shut all the spiritual uh, life out as well. And it goes on, it says, and I will give you a heart of flesh. In other words, a heart that, that, that it, it can be a, a heart of uh, other people as well. It can be a heart of understanding because it will be a spiritual heart heart okay um, and that's what it is you know when the Lord talks about having a new heart he's not uh, cutting the old one out putting a new one in he's refreshing what's already there because he put the breath into you and you know w when we seek in those ventures we're not seeking God so he will refresh that heart and, and be like a new man a new woman okay and then verse 27 and I will put my spirit within you isn't that a beautiful thing the Lord will actually renew you and put a spirit of, of God in you, a Holy Spirit. I tell you, there's something wonderful about that. We'll speak about that another day. And, and it says, um, goes on, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you should keep my judgments and do them. You see, when you follow God, you have a, a burden in your heart to do the right things. You're not going to be sinless. No, there's no such thing as a sinless man except Jesus Christ that walked upon the earth, okay? And Adam and Eve in the garden, okay? But then they went to sin because they had freedom of choice. And that's, that's what you have, okay? God uh, doesn't choose people. We've addressed that on many, many occasions before. Okay, and it, and it goes on in verse 28. And, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I shall be your God. Isn't that a, a great thing? You shall be my people, and I shall be your God. You know, when the, uh, the Jewish people, when, when Christ came along, they rejected Christ because they believed that they were God's chosen and no one else could, could, could be with God. They didn't believe that the Gentiles or, or, or the Romans or anyone else could be with God. Only them uh, could be with God. But God, God has, has taken all, all that veil away. You see... Sure, the Jewish people are God's chosen people. Make no mistake about that, okay? And, and Jerusalem has been restored. We've seen that today, which is a Bible prophecy. But they took it to the extreme where they thought they were the only ones. And God had, through Christ, had to say to them, no, you, 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 you are my people. You were my first people. You're the chosen people, but you have erred from me. And Christ spent a lot of his ministry explaining to the scribes and the Pharisees, the Jewish people, how they had erred from the faith, how they, you know, they weren't accepting of the Samaritans. They weren't accepting of the Gentiles, which is the other people. They were only accepting of themselves. And that's not what the Bible teaches us. The Bible teaches us love your neighbor. You see, I guess it really it's no different today with the Calvinists. They think they're God's chosen people, just like the Jews did back then. But Christ rebuked that. There was none of that. It wasn't to be, okay? God says you can be his. You can be his chosen people. That's when you come to him. That is when. And let's, let's read that again because it's very, very profound. And it says here, you should dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. Okay? That was the Jewish people, okay? And you should be my people and I will be your God. I mean, that, that, that's, that's what it is. God says you will be mine. When you've got a new heart, you will be mine. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what race, what color. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter who you are and where you come from. God is willing that none should perish. That's you, that's me, that's, that's every person upon this earth. God has a burden for because he put the breath in them. Okay, so you need to study this and you'll find, that, you'll find that out, that there is the purpose. God wants you back. He doesn't want you doing 
uh, all the things away from him. He wants you with him. And I'm not saying that you can't climb mountains. I'm not saying that you can't uh, be a successful sports person. I'm not saying that, that you can't sail around the world. I'm not saying you can't be an Iron Man or whatever you want to be. But to put God first. That's what I'm telling you. Because then, if something doesn't work out, you still have the hope and the purpose in life that many people don't have because something is missing. And it always will be missing because they've not fulfilled the spiritual part of their life, which is the Lord. You see, we're, we're a fleshly being with three parts, a body, soul, and a spirit, okay? We're three parts in one, just like the Trinity, the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're, 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 they're three, all, but it's all in one, okay? And when we don't realize that there's another side of our life after this life this is a fleshly life but there is a spiritual life after this okay and i'm not spiritualizing everything don't don't take me wrong here but there is a spiritual element once your flesh is died and and your spirit has left that's the element that i'm referring to that people just cannot grasp cannot understand cannot get their head around that that is what that's where god dwells that's where christ dwells at, at present the right hand of god that realm the one that you just choose to not think about all the time, that's what's missing. You need to understand study, just like you would do if you were out for a venture. Okay, you need to study and learn. Don't just write it off and say, well, there's no spiritual room. No, 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 there is, because there's dark spirits as well. And that's what controls a lot of the world today. And you say, well, there's so much evil out there. Well, there is, because dark spirits control that. Okay, very dark spirits, and they influence people. And that's why you have those things. It's, it's just part of the world. Anyway, let's move on to another verse because there's so much I need to tell you about this topic. In the wonderful book of Psalms, in uh, Psalm 32, verse 8, it says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Verse 9, Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in a bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Okay, God says, I'll instruct you, I'll give you the way, I'll give you the purpose, I'll show it to you if you allow me to. But if you don't allow me to, it's a bit like the horse. You know, it's... If you notice, we live in a world today where um, so many people have got too much to say who don't know anything about anything. They've never studied anything, but they've suddenly become an expert on everything. Now, I'm telling you straight up, I'm not an expert on everything, but I'll tell you what I do know. I do know what God says. That's all that matters to me, okay? I know what God says, and I know His way. And if you read that for what it is, I'll read it again. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. In verse 9, be not as the horse or the mule, which I have, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in a bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee and bite you. <laughs> That's exactly right. Verse 10, many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. And verse 11, be glad in the Lord and rejoice ye righteous, and shout for joy, all that ye are upright in heart. I love that. I just love that. I think that is so beautiful it, it, that the Lord is saying that the, the, the wicked are not going to prosper. They might seem to prosper in this world at the current time. But in the spiritual world, they're not going to prosper. They've got, a, they, they've got a, a horror waiting for them in the next world. Trust me, they don't want to accept it, but they certainly do. Okay? And, and, I'm, and I'm not the judge. Just <laughs> get that right. All, all you who want to go, I hate speech. No, no, I'm not the judge. I'm not going to judge on whether you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong. You probably know that yourself. Your conscience will tell you if it's right or wrong. I don't have to judge you. The Bible says I'm not to judge you anyway. But you know what this book says. It's up to you. Follow it or don't follow it. God gave you the choice. I'm not a Calvinist who says, well, you're elected to hell and you're elected to heaven. That's rubbish, okay? You've got a choice to choose either way you want, and it's absolute freedom, absolute choice. It's all yours to choose for. And that's why there's wickedness in the world today, simply because people have got a choice. And the dark, dark, dark spirits have influenced those people. You want to get away from that? If you're caught in it, come to this book. I love my King James Bible, in the English language. 
really, seriously, if you've got a problem, trust me, through experience in life, and if something's missing in your life, come to this book because God's promises have never failed. You read this book with sincerity, you'll find the truth. Anyway, let's look at another verse. God's promises are so secure. Let's read this in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. It says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, it is he that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Okay, so we're talking about dark spirits here. And God says, don't fear it. Okay, stay away from it. But don't fear it. Okay, many people live in fear of, of dark spirits. Um... That's because they haven't got the protection of God. They don't have the peace that passes all understanding. And that something is missing. And that's the peace. That's the protection. That's the love of the mighty God. But God says, you know, be of good courage. If you trust me, I'll take care of you. Okay? The evil spirits will not be able to touch you. That's what God said here. And let's go down to Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. It says um, here, And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. You see, in our life today, there are so, so, so many people who want to give us grief. Okay? It, it, it is common. It's very, very common for people to want to... Uh, uh, I guess use hate speech if you want to call it that. Everyone says it's hate speech when you say something they don't like. Um, there are so many people who, who want to try and change this book, who want to do things, who want to call out Christians and say, you're hating me, you're hating me, you're hating me. We're not hating anybody, okay? We're just telling you the truth. We're just a messenger. So don't be dismayed. God will look after you against those type of things. Oh, there'll be people who come after you all the time. They always do and they always have done. But... You know what? Don't worry about it. Don't be dismayed. God is with you and he will give you that peace that you don't have if you don't have him. Okay? Something's missing. Let's look at another verse. And again, here we read in the book of Joshua uh, about the Lord giving us strength. It says in Joshua 1 verse 9, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and, and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And then over in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, uh, verse 4, we read this. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. You see... God can't be any clearer, I don't think, in follow me, I'll give you the strength, I'll give you the courage. If you don't understand things, um, then come to me and I'll give you the understanding. Don't just say something's missing, I don't know what it is. Something's missing, I don't know what it is. I don't know where to go, I don't know where to start, I don't know how to fix my life. Now don't say those things because I'm telling you, this, this, it's here, it's here. You know, it's interesting how God said you don't know how the, the bones are grow in the womb. Um, we live in a, a world and, uh, that doesn't understand anything really about the body, the baby. They don't understand that a baby is alive. They don't understand that the baby is, you know, uh, coherent. They don't understand the baby is formed. Weeks, just a few weeks into life, there's a person there. There's a real person there. Sadly, they don't have a voice most of the time because they can't speak at that point of time. But that's a real person, folks. That's, that's not just a, a lump of flesh. That's a, it's a real person. And the Lord says, here, you don't understand how they grow. And you know what? Doctors will be the first ones to tell you that they don't know much about the brain. They don't know much about the heart. They've, they've sort of got a, a good idea on how it pumps and how it does things, but they don't know how it grows and all the nerves and the muscles and everything it does, they've got an idea. They can replicate false hearts and just put a pump in people to keep them alive and things like that. But you know what? If, if you sat down with, with, with a doctor, you know, a specialist of, of, of anything, they would say to you, we, we don't understand everything. You know, if they were honest, 
we don't know everything, you know, we just, it, it's, it's such a, a complex and a wonderful, wonderful creation that they just don't know. But you can know. <laughs> You don't, you don't have to have that missing part in your life. You don't have to go, well, we don't know how all this come about and we can't figure it out and it's all too complex because God is greater in his thinking, in his way, in his creation than, than us. Obviously, naturally. And when you, you sit down and you think to yourself, well, hang on a minute, you know, something's not right, something's missing, I can't put the missing bits together, I don't have the jigsaw puzzle, but it's, it's here, it's not even a jigsaw puzzle. Remember at the beginning we talked about if you set out on a venture, you've got to have study and then some, learn from experience in history. It's no different with this book. If you want to understand it, you don't just open a page and start reading it and then open another page and start reading it because that doesn't work. You know, I've known so many people who've opened up the Bible and they've come across the baguettes. <laughs> it's just amazing. But you know what? The baguettes are there for the, the scientifically minded, those who want to count the, the times and the numbers and the figures. It's, it's there, you know, and look, everything's there that you need to know to be satisfied. You don't need to have anything missing in your life if you really, really want to study this book. So your next adventure should be this book, really, I'm telling you, because then you'll start to understand things and you won't just look upon Christians as you know, bigots or, or, or people who should be perfect or, or whatever, you won't start coming to that conclusion that the world is trying to teach you about Christianity, about God, about the things in the Bible, if you start reading it for yourself. But if you listen to those keyboard warriors and the social media people and the people on the talk shows, you're going to get very lost because they're very lost. And they quote things that are not in here, or they misquote things that are here, or they quote things that were for a different time, a different place, and they don't tell you why it was happening at that point of time. And there's a lot of fake news out there, as you've heard people say before, but there certainly is. And, you know, I, I just saw an interesting article the other day that there was a prediction by a man um, that mainstream media in 10 years from now will be dead. And I tell you what, I was just reading what he had to say, and it's not far wrong. Because if they don't stop giving their opinion on everything and just let people make up their own minds, no, they won't survive, no, because people are becoming so wise as to, you know, uh, what, what is uh, left media, what is biased media, um, what, what, what is uh, right media, that they're becoming wise to it. And then, of course, you've got the other spectrum of people who every time something's said, they cry out, I'm a victim of hate speech. I'm a victim. I've been bullied. What a lot of rubbish. Absolute rubbish. You know, as I've said before, you can't be offended if you don't believe this book. If you don't believe there's a God, what are you offended in? You know, I can't be offended by something I don't believe. No, I can't. No. You can call me anything you like. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm... God says, I'm not to be offended by any of that. No, no, I'm not going to be offended by it. You can call me what you like. You can say what you like about me. It really does not matter. But what does matter is if you really want to attack Christianity, you really want to attack Christians, know what you're talking about first. Don't just come up with some brash idea from some verse that you've read and bring it over into a new era. Don't do that because that's absolute nonsense and it's, it's not the truth. The reason you're doing that, if you're doing that, is because something's missing in your life, isn't it? Let's look at another verse. Now let's turn to the book of 2 Corinthians, and we're going to uh, chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And then it goes on, and it says in verse 18, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given us the ministry of reconciliation. Through Christ's reconciliation. Isn't that amazing? You can be reconciled unto God through Christ, okay? And you know, you know what happens when you, you do that? Old things have passed away. They're gone. You're not worried about what people have said. You're not worried about what people have done. You can just forgive them. You know? You, you may not trust them still. You, you, you may not... Uh, have, uh, have their respect, but you can just forgive them anyway, okay? Because you can't demand trust and respect. Those are things that have got to be earned, okay? You don't just go, I want it. That's what a lot of people say in the world today. I want to be respected. I want to be trusted. Well, earn it. Earn it. Prove 
that you should be trusted. Prove that you should be respected, okay? That's all you have to do. It's not that hard. But if you speak to people in a coarse manner, or you speak to people in a harsh manner, or you want to do a hate speech, and I'm talking real hate speech, not the other rubbish, then, you know, no, that's, that's not acceptable. Absolutely not, no. But if you come to Christ, you can throw away the old baggage, okay? You don't need the burdens on your back of all the things that have gone wrong and failures and all the things in your life. That You know, when you realize that something's missing, you come to Christ, you're reconciled, you're a new person, you're a new creature, and the old things don't matter anymore. You know, before I came to Christ, I had a wretched life. It was horrible, but I, it's gone. It's history. It's past. It's finished. I don't need it. There are still people that I know who are still back there, and they're still struggling. Some of them are alive, some of them are gone, dead. Never found the truth. And some still haven't found the truth. Something's still missing in their life. And they still don't know what it is. And it's not for lack of me telling them. No, it's not. I've told them a hundred times, just come here and read this book. And some of them don't even admit there's a God. I say to them, hey, listen, take my challenge. Take a week and call to God earnestly, honestly, to answer you. And he's never failed. He's always answered. Always. But what are you scared of? You're just scared that he might change your life? Maybe you don't want to change. Is that what it is? Because let me tell you, it's never failed when people call out to God, honestly. He'll, he'll answer you. He'll open your eyes. He'll open your heart. He'll open your mind. And if you follow that path, and God says, read my word, I hold my word high, says God. My word is all. You follow the Lord and you read this word. The Holy Spirit will convict you. Then there'll be nothing missing. Everything's fulfilled. Truth sets you free. That's what this book is all about. Truth setting you free. Let's look at another verse. In the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 9, it says this, Lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. You know, you know what? You don't need to lie lie anymore. You don't need to prove to people, I can do this, I can... You, you don't need to talk, you know, and tell people, no, I didn't fail, it was someone else's. You don't need to do that anymore. You just need to say, hey, listen, you know, I've got something greater. You don't need to lie about anything. Put off lies to one another. Verse 10, and it says, and have put on the new man, which is, is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Wow. So you're renewed in the image of Christ, not in the image of yourself, not in your self-glory, not in your self-righteousness, as so many people want to say about Christians with self-righteous. No, I've got no righteousness. I don't have anything. If I have any righteousness, it's Christ's righteousness because I'm telling you what's in the book. It's not my self-righteousness. I, I, I don't need self-righteousness. I, I don't need to prove anything. It's not necessary. And, and anyone who, who knows this book and knows the truth in this book, doesn't have to prove a thing. It's already been proven. It's already here. I don't need to do anything. Goodness gracious, certainly not. And there's nothing I can do anyway. How about that? I can't do a thing because this is greater than me, this book. Goodness. The Lord is, is, is greater than any individual. Don't let individuals put you off God. I told you that before. So many people go, oh, but he, he told, oh, no, forget, throw them all away. Just come to an honest God. Not a man-made religious God, not man-made philosophy that wants to talk about riddles in the Bible. There are no riddles. A child can understand this. It's not that difficult. But when you start adding men's philosophy onto it, it becomes difficult. And guess what happens when you add men's philosophy in? Something is missing, once again. That's the whole theme of our, uh, our message today is something is missing. As soon as you change this book, as soon as you start adding man's philosophy into it, nothing works. Throw it away. Man's philosophy is never, ever, ever going to work with this book because God is above the thoughts, the minds and the actions of mankind. So if you want the truth, you're seeking the truth, you need the truth because something's missing in your life. Come to the real thing. Come to the truth. Don't go to a partial truth. Don't go to a bit of a truth. Don't go to a cult. Don't go to a faith that says this book is, is not right. Don't do that. You're wasting your time because something will still be missing. Let's look at another verse. This is a great passage here in the book of Romans chapter 8. And we'll start here in verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. As I said to you earlier, 
um, people only ever try to please their fleshly side and forget all about their spiritual side. But that's the next life. Um, you need to fix it here, the Bible says. And then it goes, verse 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Wow, what a great verse. Spiritually minded, life and peace. Wow, I've told you that before. Because when you understand your spirit, then you can have peace. And you can only understand your spirit through the Holy Spirit, which is through God. You can't understand it any other way, okay? Don't listen to people who says that rocks talk and trees talk and skies talk and statues talk. That's, that's all nonsense, okay? Obviously, your common sense will tell you that. Okay, and in verse 7, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Okay? So, freedom. God says, here you go, you've got your freedom. You've got, you've got your flesh. You, you, if you want, you, you know, you've got a choice to follow me or not. You know, Verse 8, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. God's not uh, pleased with, with your fleshly rewards. He, you know, you, you, look, let, let me explain that a bit more, okay? I'm not saying that um, good works are, are, are not worthy. They are. There are people who are morally good and do good works and, and, and you know, give money to the poor and do charities and, and, and all kinds of things, okay? Um, but, you know, those, those things are not what pleases God. What pleases God is having your spirit in tune with God, okay? Having the Holy Spirit and obeying the book. That's what pleases God, okay? Um, the, other, the other things might be noble, but the thing that pleases God, and it says it here in the Bible, is, is being in tune with Him. And naturally, He wants you to be that, okay? And then in verse 9, But ye are not in the flesh. It's referring here to people who have accepted Christ, okay? But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. If the Spirit of God dwells in you, you're, you're in the Spirit. Now, if any man have not the Spirit, spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Okay, so if you don't have the Spirit of Christ and you haven't trusted Christ, then God's not going to listen to you. Okay, he's not going to. The Bible's very, very clear about that. You need to have Jesus Christ. That is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, I am the way, the way, not a way. Okay, there are not multiple ways, the way. I am the way, I am the truth. You're looking for the truth, something's missing in your life, this is the truth. Christ professed the truth and the life. Life is simply what it means. A better life, a new life, a renewed life. Something that fills that hole, that void in the heart because something is missing. And I know, I know, so many people never admit it, but there's a massive hole in their heart that only God can fill. But they just can't bring themselves to do it. Why? 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 Ask yourself. There's no reason for you not to understand or accept what Christ is saying here. There's no other way. Fill yourself with my way. Fill yourself with my truth. Fill yourself with my life. And that hole in the heart, spiritual hole in the heart, can be mended. Let's look at one more verse to uh, finish off today. In the book of John, chapter 8, verse 31, words in red in my Bible, Christ speaking, it says this, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. There were people of the Jewish faith, Gentile Samaritans and others, who had believed on Christ. And he was addressing them. He knew his time was short, but he had to address them. And listen, this is very, very, very important. Listen to the words of Christ. It says this, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. Christ doesn't lie. If you continue in his word, this book, the Holy Bible, then you're his disciples. And when you stand before God, no sin. No sin if you've trusted Christ. Christ is the intermediary for that sin. And then it says this. It says, Verse 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. What's stopping you from filling the void in your heart when the truth will make you free? You know and I know so, so, so many people that something is missing.
but it doesn't have to be. It's a choice. It is a choice. It doesn't have to be missing. That spiritual hole in your heart can be healed by the glory of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, once and for all. The peace that passes all understanding. The love that passes any love you could ever have on earth. Oh yes, you might have love from a spouse or a sister or a brother or a friend or a husband or wife or relatives, but no, no. Nothing will ever fill that hole except the love of God through Jesus Christ who died on Calvary for the sins of the world so that that hole could be filled by the Holy Spirit. If you're missing something today in your life, something is missing, I'm sure many of you do have that. Come to the Lord because He offers you the spiritual fulfillment right here on earth before you reach your home in heaven. What a wonderful, wonderful thought. Lord bless. Bye for now.